Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name's Lizzie and today I've got a slightly different video for you um, because usually I make videos all about sewing and dressmaking and making my clothes but I got married a few months ago. It was pretty much a complete DIY wedding. We did so much ourselves and so I thought it might be really fun to show you guys some of the decorations we made and tell you how we made them. The venue that we had was a complete blank canvas and it needed quite a lot sort of adding to it to bring it to life. And some of the decorations that we made are these gold hoops. Now this is not what they ended up looking like on the day. I'll insert some photos so you can see what they looked like because they also had some real foliage and flowers and things on them. Um, but yeah, these were a key part of our decor. These are essentially some gold hula hoops wrapped with fake ivy and we also had real foliage added to them and tissue paper flowers. Now these were just so brilliant for adding some interest to some big blank walls. We had several big blank walls to just, they just looked really sad and boring on their own so we wanted to add something to them and because these hoops are quite big they're a really good way you could put sort of three hoops on one big wall and it all of a sudden transformed it and made it look like it was decorated basically so it was a really good way to cover quite a large space with only a few decorations so let me tell you how i made them so as you will see one of the key things you need are hula hoops so i'll start with what you need you need hula hoops um we bought all of our hula hoops from a local toy shop um, actually not local to be now, local to where my parents live. It was actually in a little town called Beckles and there's a toy shop there and we found the hula hoops in there. I've been searching for hula hoops online and they were really expensive, sort of 6 99 7 a pop and we wanted about 10 plus of them. So I, it's really worth shopping around. Look in your local toy shops because we ended up paying just a couple of pounds a pop for each of them. So, you know, two or three pounds instead of seven pounds is way better. So, you need hula hoops, you need gold spray paint, you will need fake ivy that we currently have still wrapped around some of these. You will also need string, so I ended up using some twine sort of string and some green string because the green string blends in with the ivy. Um, so you'll need string to attach the ivy to the hoops and you'll also need string and command hooks to put them up on the wall. So these command hooks are great, you've probably seen them. Um, everyone who rents knows about these, I don't rent anymore but that's how I learnt about these. I'll put links to everything in the description box below but essentially these hooks allow you to put hooks on the wall temporarily and they come off again without marking the walls. So if like me you hired a venue where you were allowed to decorate it but not put any holes in the walls, these are great. So the first step that you need to do is to take your hula hoop. So this hula hoop was, I think, blue and orange and yellow stripes when I bought it. You need to spray paint them. So get your hula hoops, get your spray paint. I've got two different kinds of spray paint here. And go outside. I actually had my parents help me do this, which was great. But step one, spray your hoops. Once your hoops are dry, you can then wrap them in ivy. Now I found that this ivy, which we bought from Amazon, was really, really good. And we essentially used um, small bits of string to secure the um, ivy on the hoops. You could also use floristry wire. I think we used floristry wire on some of them actually in the end. And basically you just tie it at one section, wrap it around, um, put a couple of little pieces of string to tuck, keep it together every now and again, but you don't need much. And there you have it. I mean, this one, I'll sit back. We decided to do it all different manner of ways. So this hoop is only partially covered in ivy. We decided to just have half of it. Some of the hoops we went all the way around, some hoops we had even less, and we thought that then they could be hung at sort of different, different angles, some with the ivy at the bottom, some with the ivy at the side, etc., etc. Next you need to add extra decorations. Well actually you don't need to, you could just leave these hoops exactly as they are because to be honest I really like them just like this. We decided to bulk them out a bit more but we did wait until closer like the day before the ceremony to do this because you'll see from the photos that I'll insert that we put real foliage on ours. So we used a 
um, a florist, well not even a florist, we used actually a local flower farm, local to where we got married, it's called Sussex Flower Farm, and we basically sourced a load of flowers and foliage directly from them, which was a lot cheaper than going to like a traditional florist and having arrangements done yourselves. And we then literally got the pieces of foliage, placed them on the hoops and tied them on with little pieces of green string and we just built it up and built it up until it looked nice. Um, we then went a step further and added tissue paper flowers. I'm going to make another video about how to make tissue paper flowers but it's really simple and um, I might even insert the footage here, we'll see, but if not I'll link to another video. To make a tissue paper flower you will need tissue paper, a ruler, a stapler, some scissors, some wire, you can use floristry wire, this is some nice snazzy um, metallic green stuff that I got from Tiger, and you'll need something to snip your wire, so some kind of wire cutters. The first step is to take your tissue paper and unfold it, and you need to cut some squares of tissue paper. Now, from experience of having made quite a lot of tissue paper flowers for my wedding and my hen party, I've come to the conclusion that I like to use um, eight layers of tissue paper. You could also use more like six layers or even more, you could use ten layers. The more layers you have, the more big and puffy your um, flowers are going to be. So what you need to do, you can see I've actually already used this tissue paper to cut one, but what you need to do is um, count the number of layers you'd like. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now this does not have to be exact, um, but you do need to end up with roughly a square. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to make this um, flower a 15 centimetre by 15 centimetre flower. You can do bigger and smaller, I think it's really nice to do a variety of sort of 10 by 10 centimetres up to sort of 20 by 20 centimetres, I think are really good sizes to do. So this one I'm doing 15 by 15, it doesn't need to be exact, I'm just going to hold my ruler up against the edge of the tissue paper, I've got my thumb holding my um, 8 layers and I'm just going to snip at the 15 centimetre mark. I'm then going to put my ruler on this side. And again, I'm just going to snip at the 15 centre mark. And now I'm going to roughly cut to join my lines in a square. So now I am left with eight tissue paper squares, and the next step is to concertina them together. I'm sure a lot of you will remember how to concertina things from school, it might be how you made fans and things. But basically what you need to do is fold over one edge, flip the tissue paper over and fold it back on itself again by the same amount. Now I'm, and repeat until you run out of paper, I'm doing this sort of roughly the width of my thumb is the width of the um, concertinas that I'm doing. Again, you can do any width you like, it will just impact on how slender or fat your um, petals end up being. I'm going to continue to concertina until I get to the end. There we go. Now my hands are quite hot doing this and I've just managed to rip um, a little bit of tissue paper off the end there. Don't worry about little rips like that, you really won't notice once the flower is finished. So I've now got my concertinaed um, tissue paper square. I'm going to fold it in half because I need to work out where the midpoint is. You can estimate where the midpoint is, but I do recommend you to try and be quite accurate with this part because we're going to staple it in the middle. Now, if you staple it too far to one side, you're going to end up with a wonky flower, so it is quite important to keep your staples in the middle. So I'm slotting it on, stapling it in the middle, and there we go. Next step is to attach your wire. Now, you need to attach some wire so that you've got something to attach your tissue paper flowers to other things with. So you might be using these to make some um, headdresses, some flower crowns like I made for my, um, for my hen party and you need the wire to then wrap around the headbands. Or you might be doing what I'm doing and making them 
using these flowers to decorate something, so to decorate some hoops that hang on the wall at a wedding or a party, and you'll use the wire to attach it to the hoops or to attach it to whatever it is you're doing. So I'm going to unwrap a stretch of wire and I'm going to fold it round the centre of my tissue paper flower like so. The more spare wire you give at the end there, the more that's what you're going to have to play with to attach it to things. I think this much, so how much is this? Let me measure it. That's about eight centimetres. I think that's usually plenty, but you could give yourself a bit more if you want to have spare. Then you're going to need to get your wire snips and just snip the excess wire off. And then just give it a twist or two just to keep it in place. Now the wire needs to be pointing straight down in line with your staple, so it doesn't it doesn't stick out the front here like this, it sticks out down to the bottom away from your staple, like so. Now we're going to create the shape of our petals and we're going to do that by trimming the ends of our concertina paper squares with our scissors. You can do rounded petal shapes or pointy petal shapes, whatever you prefer. I'm going to do pointy petal shapes today because my scissors aren't very sharp and it will just be a little bit easier for me. There we go. You can be a little bit scruffy, it doesn't have to be super neat because you're not going to notice once the flower is finished. Next is just the final step. The final step is to puff up all of these layers of tissue paper to make it look like a flower. So, you're going to want your wire sticking down because that's going to be the bottom of the flower. So I tend to sort of balance it in between my fingers a little bit like that. And then what I, it's, this takes a little bit of practice, you might find it quite tricky on the first go, but you basically need to spread the petals out a little bit, and layer by layer you need to pull them towards the middle. And you need to try and pull them in a semicircle shape so that this half of the flower will stand up to meet this half of the flower. So layer by layer you just need to gently pull, and just don't forget to bring the edges in towards the centre so it's like a semicircle. Do you see how that's starting to look like a flower? And the more layers you have, the more you'll have in the middle, if that makes sense, so the bushier your flower will be. There we go, that's half our flower. Isn't it looking so pretty already? Now spin it round and do the other side. You, hopefully you can notice from this video, but I find it good to use my left hand to hold the petals and use my right hand to pull on them. So I kind of hold the underneath um, petals with this hand and pull on the top layer with my right hand. Oh, I just accidentally ripped it. Don't panic, this will happen, but you're never going to notice, so just don't worry about it, just keep going. And there you have it, there is your tissue paper flower. You can just give it a little scrunch and a zhuzh to make sure you're happy with it. But it looks so pretty, that's what it looks like from the side. So you could even just use these as decorations as flowers, just pop them in a little vase or something, make a little, little mini bouquets. Um, but I used these pieces of wire to wrap around my hula hoops to attach the flowers to my hula hoop decorations for my wedding. And yeah, but you could do whatever you want with them. You can add um, any other sorts of decorations or leave them as they are. Once you've got them decorated to how you're happy with them, you're, you're done. You're literally done. And then on the day of your wedding or the day before your wedding when you're setting up or your party, whatever you're making these for, you can literally use your command hooks pop them on the wall and use string and you can literally just, well actually these hooks you can literally just hook them on like this, but if you did want to be a bit more discreet and have the hooks sort of higher out of eye line then you could tie a piece of string to them and hang them. Now we use these on the walls and we also use them to kind of disguise quite a big, not particularly attractive acoustic board that was on the back of our venue. So we had like a big panel of these hoops and then we had some on the walls as well. One tip I would give you if you do choose to make tissue paper flowers like I did is actually 
you can make the tissue paper flowers in advance and keep them in like a big box, big plastic box with a lid so they don't get squashed. But I would advise you not to add your um, tissue paper flowers to your hoops until the day before the wedding because um, if you then stack them up in a big, <laughs> if you stack them up like this, then all your tissue paper flowers are going to get squashed because they don't hold their shape very well. Like if they're squashed, they will then be squashed and look a bit sad. Um, yeah. I hope you found this video useful. I'm sure, sorry that I haven't been able to actually film myself making them like live. Um, but as you can imagine, with a DIY wedding, I had three months to make all the decorations and do everything, including making my wedding dress. I didn't have time to like film it all tutorial style as I was doing it. It would have taken four times as long and I wouldn't have had everything done by the wedding day. So I hope it's still helpful for me to just describe to you what I did and tell you um, what I did. But I want to let you know that all of the links to everything that I can link to will be in the description box. Um, so all the spray paint and the fake ivy etc, all the links will be down below. I'm going to be making several more videos of like, like these. So I made a bar sign, I made some rag bunting, and um, what else am I going to make videos on? Um, I made some photo boards that looked really effective. Um, some glittery table numbers um, and all sorts of things. So if you'd like to see more of this kind of video, some wedding DIYs, then um, yeah, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!